Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. It's been a while since I've done any actual games programming, so let's remedy that now with a new Tick80 game. Um, this game, Space Commander, um, if you're familiar with my channel, you probably recognise it from my intro sequence. Um, that This was a game that I wrote um, a few years ago actually on something called Pico 8, which is very similar to Tick80. Um, but I never quite got around to translating it across onto the um, Tick80, which we use mostly in this channel. But I finally got around to doing that and thought well, that would be a very good series then for a new game in our tutorial series. So this video is really just going to have an overview of the game itself. We'll have a look at the various programming challenges that we're going to be facing. And then in the next videos, I'll tackle each one of those in turn. So let's get straight in and have a look at the Space Commander game. Space Commander is a space shoot 'em up game programmed in a package called Tick80. If you're not familiar with Tick80, it's a really fun programming environment which makes it very easy to learn programming and code your own games. Everything you need is built into one easy to use app. And best of all, it's absolutely free. Tick80 then allows you to write your actual code, but we can also create graphics, sounds and music and then put them all together to make a final game. Now I've, I've already created a couple of video series teaching you how to code using Tick80. So if you've never coded before, please make sure you check out my Space Invaders and Asteroids courses, where I'll take you from your very first line of code right through to making fully working games. Now in this series, I'm really going to concentrate on the main coding issues to get this game working. I'll still be going through the code and showing you how it works, but I'll assume you understand a bit about programming so we can really concentrate on developing the algorithms and getting the actual game working. And again, as I said, if, if you do need to learn how to code, then please check out my two other courses uh, and I'll put links up in the top right corner and down in the description. So let, let, let's start by getting into some gameplay and see what this game actually looks like. In this game, the player ship is fixed in the center of the screen and the world rotates and moves around you. Enemy ships then attack you from various directions and they have a little sort of AI algorithm built into them. So they will come and attack you, fire their missiles and then run away and then re-attack again. Um, you can see there that um, as you shoot ships, um, they start to lose health. So it takes more than one hit to kill ships. Um, as they start to get hit, they lose some energy and you can see that they start to travel slower um, and as they die. Um, the gameplay itself then, um, we have in the top right corner a, a long range radar screen. So obviously the amount you can see on the screen is quite small. So that radar screen then lets you see where enemy ships are in relation to you uh, a bit further. So those are the, so that shows you things which are off the actual um, active game screen. Up in the top left corner then, we have our score. Um, and then we have the, the green bar or the, the bar that changes color. Um, that is your health. The blue number is the number of aliens left on this um, level. And as you just saw there, um, if you manage to kill all the aliens, then you go on to the next level. Now the next levels have um, more powerful ships. So there we have one of the second level ships and those ones in particular there, um, they fire guided missiles at you. So those missiles will track you and try and kill you. Um, whereas the these little green ships there only fire just simple straight line firing um, bullets. So the gameplay itself, then, as I say, um, as you go through, you get three lives. So you can see up in the top left corner as well, we have the number of ships remaining. As you crash into other ships, obviously that gives you much, much more damage. As the game progresses then through each level, we get more aliens per level, plus we also get them attacking in much larger waves. So, so we get more aliens on screen at any one particular time. Plus, of course, they get stronger and faster and fire more missiles and so on. So the game does increase in, in difficulty level as you go through. 
Of course, since you're programming the game ourselves, um, all of these parameters and how they work as the game progresses is all totally under our control. So we get to choose exactly how difficult and how fast the, in the difficulty increases um, ourselves. So eventually, of course, we run out of spaceships and when our last one dies, of course, that then is the game over. And the game then just simply goes back into its sort of holding screen and, and off we go from there. So let's start having a look at some of the issues in programming this game. And those, of course, will become the subjects of the next sets of videos. So the first challenge we'll be having a look at is how to draw the game um, characters, so the various spaceships and so on. Uh, so you've seen on the demo of the game, the player ship, which is placed in the very centre of the screen, we can use a sprite for that. So sprites are these um, bitmap graphic objects. And you can see here on screen, this is the sprite editor inside T80. And that one at the moment, so this, this area here, this is our sort of level one player ship. And you can see that we have a number of them defined. Um, on the game and, and those are good because you, you can use multiple colors for those and they are just really little graphics but the problem with these types of graphics are that they are quite hard to rotate um, especially in this type of programming environment so if I come out of here and actually run this little demo game I've got the bitmap so the sprite graphic down the bottom there for the player ship and then the new what I'm going to call vector graphics for the alien ships above that. And with the sprite graphics, if I try to rotate, we can see that the alien ships are starting to rotate and the vector graphics, which is really just drawing them using lines. So we define a number of points that make up the image of the ship. And you can see that all we're doing is just simply drawing lines between those points. I can rotate those points and redraw that ship in any orientation I want. But for our bitmap graphics, we actually have, we, we can only rotate the square image in 90 degree increments. So as I get towards the um, ships pointing upwards, you can see I suddenly jump to the 90 degree increment. Now I could, if I wanted to, um, draw the ship in different rotations and I would have to physically redraw that sprite in the different orientations and that way I could get more smooth movement. It still wouldn't be perfect because of course it depends on how dedicated I am in drawing these graphics. So I, I could draw 45 degree angles of that ship but obviously that would still give very jerky movement. So we need some way of then creating these vector graphics. And all of that, of course, um, what was one of the bits of fun about Tick80 is quite a few of these things, you have to do them yourself. Now, I did actually do vector graphics in another program that I produced a full course for in Asteroids. So if we drop across into Asteroids here, and if I run that, you'll see that we have our vector graphics going here as well. So this very much is exactly the same idea. So if I, if I press Z to run that, we can see that we have our, our ship in the middle. And again, it rotates in very smooth action, again, just using the vector graphics. And all of the asteroids then rotate very smoothly as well. But in this particular program here, we used just single colors for each of our um, vector shapes. So if I come across back into the... Um, Space Commander, you can see there we now have um, both the ability to have multiple colors in our vectors, but also to be able to draw more complex shapes. So this this program here uses a, a quite upgraded version of the vector graphics package that I developed for Asteroids, uh, where we actually create a, a little miniature language which lets us describe how these um, player objects are drawn. So we can describe how to draw a line, how to move the cursor, how to change the color and so on. So that's part of the fun of, of building this particular game up as well. So that gives us then, once we use our vector graphics, that gives us this ability to have uh, an infinitely posable uh, or, or rotatable um, player graphic or, or alien ship graphic. And you can see there the, the difference in the quality of animation between those alien ships and the player ship is, is it, it, well, th th there's no comparison at all. 
you, you will have seen this idea of redrawing or having multiple poses of, of um, sprites. If you've ever used any of these sort of 8-bit um, or sort of the retro gaming and so on, you'll notice a lot of those use sprites and you'll see the characters as opposed to having very smooth animations, they, they obviously have a number of set drawn poses and, and that's what you're, you're, you're having to do. And you, you sometimes have to draw, you know, tens or, 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 or at least a lot of different poses to get good animation going. Whereas, of course, with these particular ships here, the vector graphics gives us that um, truly infinite rotatability, if that's, a, if that's a real word. So once we have the ability to draw vector graphics and therefore um, easily rotate our enemy ships, we need to work out how we're going to model this whole game inside our game world. So obviously we have our player ship, which we're going to fix in the center of the screen. And again, as I say, that allows us to use a nice sort of multicolored bitmap sprite graphic for that. Our other ships then, and any other object that's inside our game, that now needs to be modeled rotating and moving around the player ship. So obviously everything has a position in this 2D space. So we're, we're going to model the, wor the game world as a 2D space. So everything will have coordinates inside that and we'll be moving around inside this 2D space. But we then need to work out a way to then render that 2D space centered around our player ship. So if, if I was to rotate the player ship, which I'm doing just now, What's happening here is that our player ship is rotating. The other objects on the screen are actually still in the same place or the same coordinates and the same orientation within the game world. Yep, so, so those ships are stationary and those stars are stationary. But as I rotate my player ship, the world has to rotate around it. So we have to work out a way of both modeling where and at what orientation objects are within the world, and then work out how to draw that on the screen so that it looks like the ship is staying stationary in the center and everything else is moving around it. Okay, so you can see there, as, as I rotate the, pl the player ship, it does not move, the world moves around it, and all of the objects need to then change their orientation with relation to the player ship, even though they are actually not moving within the game world. Okay, and again, if I, if I start to move the player ship, we can see that we have that same situation where everything is is moving and rotating around the player ship. So that's another of the challenges we're going to have to come across in this particular game, is working out how all of that is, is modeled in the software and implemented in our software. So the final big challenge, again, there's lots of little challenges along the way here, is to work out some sort of AI algorithm for our enemy ships. So if, if we go into the actual game here, and if I just don't move at all, let me just activate this window. So we have our player ship sitting in the center there, and our alien ships are spawning at some distance away. And you can see them starting to come into the radar screen here. So we have to work out what, what do they actually do? So they have to do something sensible. They can't just sort of fly around randomly. So these ships, you can see, they, they're, they're coming in, they are attacking. Once they've finished attacking, they then fly off and then come back and attack. Sometimes they crash into us um, and, and so on. But they are all obeying a, a set of rules which governs their movement, which makes them appear to be doing something intelligent. And again, that of course is part of the programming challenge. And, and of, of course all of these programming challenges make this even more fun. Because this movement scheme involves the alien ships being able to track and target our player ship, we can also reuse that then for guided missiles at the higher levels. And as you can see here, we have some missiles and they will gradually track down the um, player ship and try and destroy it that way as well. So again, it's just another little added thing that we can do once we've got some parts of the code worked out. 
So that's the game we're going to be working on over the next few videos in this series. If you want to have a go at the game um, itself, then please do visit my main website at bitesandbits.co.uk and I'll put a link in the description below to the actual page for this project where you can play this game. If, if you want to follow along, then please do make sure you subscribe and check your notification bell so that um, as soon as I publish these videos over the next couple of weeks, um, you'll be notified and be able to watch those. Um, as I say, all the software is available. I'll put links um, both below and on the project pages in my main website where you can download all that and get ready and then start working your way through this project. Uh, again, if you haven't done any programming before, then please do follow along. But um, don't forget the Space Invaders and Asteroids courses um, are specifically designed for people who have never programmed before so that you can quickly get into games programming with this very nice TIC-80 um, um, development system. So I look forward to seeing you in some of the next videos and bye for now. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.